Tell him to make it count. Welcome to Fairly Critical. I am your host, Jacob, and today we are looking at the vital role that a character death can have on a story. Um, but before we begin, I just want to take another moment and thank you all for the support that you have shown um, on the comparison video between Halo Reach and Rogue One. Um, that video has received 5,100 views um, as of the time of this recording, and words cannot describe how blessed I feel by that. That is mind-boggling to me, so thank you guys. Thank, thank you so much. Now to the video. Killing characters is not always an easy thing to do. When a character dies, all the potential they had to impact the story moving forward goes away. So you want to make sure the impact of their death is worth it. This is especially true when killing protagonists. In our mind, there are four possible effects that we should all look at when discussing the worth of a protagonist's death. Those effects are emotion, sacrifice, growth, and fulfillment. Let's start with emotion since it essentially underlines all the rest. When I talk about the emotion of a death, I mean the emotional effect it will have on other characters. This is the more general effect because every character's death should bring about some type of response from another character that is connected to them. If we liked the dying character, seeing that response can give us a chance to grieve alongside the surviving characters. We share their pain, so we feel empathy for them, and that bonds us to them even more. At least, that would likely be the case if the story has been written correctly, and the bonds between the dead character and the surviving one have been clearly understood by the audience. If a character dies, but we have no great reason to have liked them, we may not share the emotional bond with the surviving character. Intellectually, we may understand that we are supposed to be sad, but emotionally, we just don't care as much, if at all. This normally happens when the writing or direction of a story is just not adequate. Maybe they only showed the character for a couple of minutes of screen time, or their dialogue wasn't as compelling as the writers thought it would be. If the writing is adequate, but we still don't like the character, then we are probably not supposed to like the character, or at least we should be somewhat unsettled by them. Then, if that character dies in some heroic act, then there is a bit of catharsis the other characters or the audience can feel, because their last moments were spent in redeeming fashion. Boromir's death from the end of Fellowship of the Ring is a great example of this. Beyond the immediate emotional reaction of the surviving characters, a protagonist's death can truly shape or completely change the trajectory of a plot. This can run the gambit between the character's death, getting a surviving character closer to their objective, to a surviving character making life harder on others, either intentionally or unintentionally, because of the effect the death had on them. The grief that Boromir's dad feels in Return of the King is a prime example of this. This is my first command to you. How did you escape and my son did not? So mighty a man as he was. The mightiest man may be slain by one arrow. And Boromir was pierced by many. You are not alone in this fight. Send word to Theoden of Rohan. Light the beacons. You think you are wise, Mithra. Yet for all your subtleties, you have not wisdom. Word has reached my ears of this Aragorn, son of Arathorn. And I tell you now, I will not bow to this ranger from the north. Last of a ragged house, long bereft to lordship. Authority has not given to you to deny the return of the king, steward. The rule of Gondor is mine, and no other's. Pretty much every revenge plot you have ever read or watched is a result of the death of a friend or loved one. When written well, a character death is an easy triggering event for the audience to latch onto. 
when written poorly, a character death may be in fridging territory. It is beyond the scope of this video to cover the topic of fridging, and it should have its own video in order to do it justice. For now, let me just say that if the dead character could have been replaced by a beloved pet, and the plot and emotional impact would have been the same, it is probably an example of fridging. And if the plot is about a pet being killed, well, let's face it, some people better die for that. Just as the emotion of a character death can bond us to a surviving character, the sacrifice of that death can bond us to the plot of the story. The word sacrifice literally means to make sacred, meaning that whatever negative action a character is about to undertake, it is somehow worth it to them. In old times, people would sacrifice their livestock to their gods. Nowadays, you might just give up soda to lose 40 pounds and enjoy a longer life with your family. The struggle itself makes the goal feel more worthy to you because you now have taken action and don't want to feel like that action has been wasted. The same rules apply when your friend comes to you and says that they have quit drinking soda and you want to see them succeed at that goal because you care for them and want their struggle to pay off. When a character you care about dies for a goal you understand, it immediately makes that goal more personal to you. Suddenly, you go from hoping the story has a good conclusion to needing the conclusion to be good, so your favorite character's sacrifice wasn't in vain. It's why we fought like demons in New Alexandria after George told us to make it count. It is why we were on the edge of our seat, internally screaming for the door to be opened in Rogue One. And remember, we have seen the original trilogy. We know the data makes it safely into Rebel hands, but we still sat there with bated breath because we had just watched our heroes die to get that data off Scarif, and we cannot let their deaths be meaningless. When a death is meaningless, it can still be quite emotionally compelling, but in a very different way. Think back to Boromir's death and ask yourself if part of the reason it hit you so hard is because the two hobbits he died to protect got captured anyway. This is an example of when a sacrifice is made in vain, and it was an extremely gut-wrenching one the first time I watched it. Where sacrifice endears a cause to an audience, growth endears a cause to another character. Specifically, when a character death spurs another character to change their ways and or take up the same cause or mission that the dead character believed in, the surviving character is experiencing growth. The difference between emotion and growth can be fairly minimal at times, but this is fairly critical, and being really nitpicky and drawing microscopically thin lines between two elements is what we do. Spider-Man is probably the best example of this that everyone knows, both the traditional story involving Uncle Ben and the variation offered by Iron Man. Traditionally, Peter Parker was reluctant to take up the mantle of Spider-Man. You may remember the immortal line delivered in Sam Raimi's classic, Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Uncle Ben's death really drives these words home for Peter, especially since his pettiness left the man who would murder his uncle go free. This would lead to Peter becoming Spider-Man and the story moving forward from there. In Far From Home, Peter has to grapple with the death of Tony Stark, who entrusted him to be the next Iron Man. The whole movie is Peter's struggle to be worthy of that trust and step into the shoes of his father figure and mentor. And I'm not even going to talk about Aunt May because I will cry again. For a non-Spider-Man example, let's look at the underappreciated film Tron Legacy. At the beginning of the film, our POV character is Sam Flynn, a young man struggling with feelings of abandonment and lack of purpose. After finding out his father, Kevin Flynn, was actually trapped in a computer, he nearly manages to rescue him. Unfortunately, things don't go according to plan, and Kevin has to sacrifice himself to give Sam a chance to escape. After Sam makes it back to the real world, he decides to take control of his father's company and become his legacy. Where both emotion and growth can affect a character, emotion tends to be the change in mood, where growth is a real change in thought. The external change is emotion, the internal change is growth. Finally, we come to fulfillment. Fulfillment is essentially the effect the death has on the dying character itself. That is to say that the protagonist's death completes the narrative arc that that character has been playing throughout their journey with us. The best example of this in recent times is Black Widow's death in Avengers Endgame. When we first meet Black Widow, she is a spy with a questionable history that she is unsure she will ever be able to put behind her. It's really not that complicated. I got red in my ledger. I'd like to wipe it out. 
As we spend more time with her, and she spends more time with Captain America, she begins to feel like she can in fact be redeemed. This leads to her fateful decision to sacrifice herself to retrieve the Soul Stone. I used to have nothing. And then I got this. This job. This family. And I was... I was better because of it. And even though... They're gone. I'm still trying to be better. And with her sacrifice, her narrative arc is completed. As a spy and assassin, she took lives. But as an Avenger, she saved them. Of course, her death has an emotional impact on the surviving Avengers, but the impact it has on her is wholly fulfilling. So those are the narrative effects a death can have on a story, and you can really see why they are important. But what if the story was written in such a way that the death didn't need to happen and the character survived? Warmir never dies? Guess we don't get the really good moment with Aragorn. He's still kind of a jerk, and the plot challenges in the third movie don't exist. Noble and Rogue One always manage to survive? Guess the Covenant and the Empire are not as strong as we think, and they will eventually be beaten. Uncle Ben never dies? Guess Peter wins enough to buy his car and becomes a professional cage fighter. Maybe he still becomes a superhero, but he will never push himself as hard unless Uncle Ben pushes daisies. Somehow the Avengers get the Soul Stone without Black Widow dying? Guess the perfect ending to her story arc will have to be written by someone else, and she will be haunted by her demons until that end comes. Okay, so a character dies. What if they come back somehow? Is it sufficient for them to have just have died, or should they stay dead? Resurrections are a little bit more complicated. If written well, and in a story in which it makes sense to bring a character back, resurrections can have dramatic effects on the plot that equal a well-written death. But they are in many ways riskier than just letting the sleeping corpses lie for two reasons. First, it can potentially undermine the emotion, sacrifice, growth, or fulfillment of a character's death. Second, there is a risk of an audience feeling that there are no longer any stakes to a story. If it is not written well or seems too easy, then the audience may always go around thinking that death can just be reversed, so there are no consequences to a character dying. Thus, any future feelings of emotion, sacrifice, grace, or fulfillment the audience feels may be lessened or simply not there. The significance a death can have on future plot lines is drastically changed or erased if a character is resurrected in much the same way as if their death never occurred. Same thing for fulfillment, in which the character's arc was tied up neatly and now has been undone. When we get into the growth and sacrifice categories, there's a little bit more leeway for a resurrection to occur. The growth that Peter Parker would undergo as a result of Uncle Ben's death would still see him take up the mantle of Spider-Man. That wouldn't change. On the flip side of that, if Kevin Flynn were to somehow be resurrected, Sam's motivations to become his father's legacy are no longer required since his dad is there to do that for him. Same thing for Boromir's brother. For the sacrifices of Noble Team and Rogue One, they may get to see the fruits of their labor if they were resurrected, and their deaths would still invest us into the plotline, but their return would divest us at least a little bit. To go back from our metaphor from earlier, if your friend said, I am giving up soda, and then tacked on the qualifier for the next month, then their struggle is not nearly as significant a challenge as we initially thought. It is almost like they were loaning the story the emotional weight of their death, and then the story paid it back to them when it didn't need it anymore. While again, this can be written in such a way that the risk is mitigated or overcome, it is still a risk. The least risky resurrection is when only the emotion category is in play, and there are no significant effects on the plot by the death. If the only effect a protagonist's death has is a scene in which surviving characters mourn that death but don't grow from it, then there is no emotional reason not to bring the character back later on. After all, the scene when the surviving characters get to rejoice at the return of their lost one can be just as compelling in its own right. Again though, this is with the caveat that it has to be written correctly and makes sense within the story's narrative. A good example of this is the return of Gamora in Avengers Endgame. 
Her death affected the Guardians, but none of them grew from it, and her return did not nullify any of the plot elements that her loss caused, such as Thanos getting the Soul Stone or the first snap. Instead, we got a nice moment between her and Nebula, and an almost touching moment between Quill that was thrown away for a quick laugh. That is not me trying to harp on this movie. In fact, I would actually argue that the need to the groin was in keeping with Gamora's character as we first meet her in 2014. Um, but it is true that Marvel movies sometimes throw away good emotional moments for quick laughs. Almost like they are scared to process them or let the audience feel too much. Getting back on topic here. Even if a resurrection is well written, there will always be a risk of future character deaths just not having the same impact, since the audience will always be wondering if there is another way for them to return. And that is why sometimes, a protagonist just needs to die and stay dead. Thank you all for watching our video and supporting us like you are. If you liked this video, smash that like button. We are a growing channel and all the likes we can get really help us out in the algorithm. Um, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and let us know in the comments if you would like to see a video over resurrections or the topic of fridging until then i've been your host jacob thank you guys again and i will see you in the next one thank you for your cooperation